Hello, welcome back to another video. I'll be covering how to use a procedural content generation tool, otherwise known as PCG in Unreal Engine 5. Now, I've made videos on this in the past, but you know, they've made an update in 5.4 and things I've shown don't exactly work. There's some, you know, slight changes. I've broken up into two separate videos this time, and one will cover how to use PCG, you know, just using a bounding box, and the other will cover how to use the splines to create paths and towns and whatnot and, and subtract those splines from the area box you might have noticed that i have these cool funky fries looking grass they may not be the color of fries but man they make me hungry and you know the trees are they're, they're kind of fun and cool uh so you can find this in the epics game store so if you open up the epics games marketplace under free epic games content you'll see this crop out sample project just go ahead and download it and you can grab the files you want and migrate it to your file all right so here i have a scene you could tell that there's just some of these sample projects in here. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna to go to edit, you wanna to go to plugins, and you wanna type PCG up here, and you'll see that you want this procedural content generation framework. I think in the newest version of Unreal Engine, this is already turned on, but in case you don't, just turn on the check mark over here, and then you're gonna to have to restart your Unreal Engine. It will force you to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. The next thing you wanna do is you want to create a folder. I think that's the best way to do it. I'm gonna call this PCG. Inside this folder, you're gonna right click, and you're gonna look for PCG graph, this thing right here. I'm gonna rename this, I'm gonna call it grass. You can name it whatever you like, but I know I'm gonna make this to contain grass. I'm gonna move this object just drag it into the scene okay and you see there's this bonding box right here okay with the gizmo that i can move now if you don't see this gizmo in your scene with the bonding box just press g on your keyboard and that will make it appear it's basically just changing the visibility now i'm going to double click into this actually before i do that scroll up in here into your outliner properties and you want to click generate okay i just generally like to do that double click in here and then in within this graph, so this graph might be up here in your browsers. I'm gonna show you what it might look like for you. It might look like this. You could just remove it like I do here. Go to your scene and then just place it to whatever size you like. I like to keep it side by side. All right, so once we have our object in the scene, right, our PCG graph grass in the scene, and then we have the graph editor open, you wanna right click to get an option of tools to select from. And I'm gonna type get landscape data right here. And that's because we need information from this landscape and this kind of gets it. it used to be in the input that's what changed in 5.4 from 5.3 you need this thing now this is kind of a new item and then you're going to right click and you need a surface sampler this is going to basically create a, a surface out of the landscape data so i'm going to move out into surfaces just like that connect them i can hold alt and click on the surface basically input area and it will disconnect them. So that's very useful as you move forward. Now, we can't see what's being populated, but basically it's a bunch of points uh, that you're gonna attach an item to, basically a mesh to, but you can't see these points. So you can just right click and click debug or press D. So I'm gonna click debug here. I'm gonna click on this and I'm press D on my keyboard to turn on and off. Now, the white and black boxes, the range represents uh, basically zeros and ones. Uh, zero being black and one being white and everything in between is the range between that. Now we use this to filter out in further steps we'll be using this but just want to kind of inform you on what that is. Now I'm going to be skipping to a lot of steps here so we can understand what this actually gives us immediately. I'm going to type static mesh spawner right here and I'm going to connect this just like that from out to in. Now in here you're going to look for mesh selector right because we we're dealing with meshes and we have these mesh entries basically what are the things what are the meshes that are entered into this list now zero items in the list i'm gonna click plus okay and this is kind of confusing just so just follow along within here you need to expand click the arrow expand again into descriptors and here there's static meshes i'm gonna go and hit in here and i'm gonna just select the spheres over here so you can understand what's going on and look this kind of looks like cat ears here for some strange reason uh, that's because the debugger's still on i'm just gonna click d and that goes away so here you can see that those points basically are the points where items get spawned okay i think it's pretty simple to understand and you want to go back into mesh entries for some strange reason it just kind of collapsed on itself again so again mesh entries index descriptors static meshes i'm going to change this to the tree i downloaded from that file and so static meshes right here and so this gives a really good understanding of how the bonding box works right if i select this and move it we have some hills over here so i'm just going to show you how this works just so you understand that it is following the landscape now if you wanted more elements you're gonna have to add more elements to the index. So up here in mesh entries, I'm gonna click plus and I'm gonna just collapse these. <clears throat> so now index zero, that was the first element. You see it's trees. So now we're gonna go ahead and here and go to descriptors and we are going to type grass. And I have a grass called grass clump three. 
Okay, now these things kind of look like french fries to me. I, I know it might not be the right color, but man, they, they really look like french fries. So, you know, they come in here and they're equally being distributed with the trees. And so if you wanted there to be more trees and less grass, just by using the kind of mesh spawner, you can go to index one over here, right? I'm gonna collapse the script here and you're gonna find this thing weight. I don't, I don't need to collapse, I could just scroll down, but uh, that's a lot of scrolling. So I advise you to, to kind of collapse it. And weight here, I'm gonna move this up to like, let's call it 20. Okay, and so what that ends up doing is it says there's a value of what's important or weight. And so it's saying grass has 20 and this tree only has one. Okay, so it, there's less priority for the tree than is the grass. That's like the best way I can describe it. Now, that's not necessarily the best way to do it because there's just really no control in that. For example, if I wanted more grass, I come back to surface sampler and I'm going to disconnect this for a second. I come back to surface sampler, I'm going to debug it, and I'm going to explain how to get more, more points. If I change the point extent to 10, it's gonna make it really small. Now, once it gets smaller, you can go ahead and move this points per square meter. Let's move it up to 10. Okay, now that's a lot. So maybe not 10, but maybe one, even one's kind of a lot. But let's go ahead and connect this, see what happens. And we get a lot of grass, and we actually get a pretty decent amount of trees. Now, I can't reduce the amount of trees here without reducing the amount of grass. So it's advised probably to adjust them on their own. So what I wanna do is, is just have a, a total new surface sampler. Let me go quick with this. Click this here, and then I'm going to type attribute noise. These are just type noise. I'll come out quicker. Attribute noise, and I'm going to select this here. Now, the reason I did that, I'm just going to make this for a second, is because I want two different uh, sizes, right? So you want a, a two different surface samplers because that's how you're controlling it. Now, uh, I'm going to turn off that, and so this is going to be the one that I'm controlling trees with. I'm going to have a separate static mesh spawner that controls the trees, and so what I'm going to do here is simply go ahead and explain the attribute noise, right? So you're going to set the input source. I like to use density. I think that works well. And what that's doing is it's controlling the amount of black, basically the darker uh, rectangles here that we're seeing. So if I change this to, let's say, 0.5, it did nothing. That's because I am debugging the surface sampler and not the attribute noise. Okay, so let's go back and, and move this back to zero. Be aware that you always have the right graph node that you're looking at and turning that on and off. In that case, I wasn't looking at the right thing that I was adjusting. So here, going from zero to 0.5, you'll see that there's no more black and everything kind of changed to the lighter colors, okay? You didn't remove any, you just changed the color range, right? So now you're going from 0.5 to one. Now you combine this with a filter, density filter right here, and you connect it. And what the density filter does, if you select it, now I need to close the debugging on attribute noise or turn it off and turn on density filter. And what you'll notice, let's just go from here to here, you'll notice that there isn't any difference right? And the reason for that is my minimum attribute noise is 0.5 and I'm filtering off from 0.5, okay? If I go back to density filter and I change this to 0.8, for example, basically everything from 0.8 to 1, so like the lightest, lightest of, of rectangles will only show up. So that's the way that you're kind of controlling the filtration here. So if I plug this back in here and turn that debugger off, you'll notice that there's just less grass. So I'm going to move this attribute noise back to zero. I think that's just better to do. And then move this down to something like 0.3. You know, I'm getting more, more items. Now, the issue is, in this case, I'm just getting trees and grass, right? And what I wanted to do is I wanted a static mesh spawner that is only trees. So I'm going to come in here, okay? And I'm going to disconnect that. And I'm going to select the mesh in trees under mesh selectors again expand here and then i'm going to come in here and i'm going to select tree okay and in this case i can now control how many trees i see okay and so let's say i come up to filter and i move this up to 0.8 again basically i'm controlling that separately i'm going to disconnect this and so i'm going to replace these trees right here with a different grass type because sometimes it's better to just have different types of grass so there's kind of a diversity of elements so i'm just going to expand this and i'm going to change this under descriptors i'm going to change this to a grass grass clump uh, one so now everything is just grass and then in here i'm going to connect the static mesh to the trees and so now the grass is super dense and the trees aren't as dense, okay? It was a very long explanation, I'm sorry, but that's kind of just how it's working. Now, the thing that you also wanna add is probably a transform points. So transform points right down here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna help me control how the trees are being populated. Also the grass, but I think the trees are more important. They're all kind of the same thing, right? It's kind of boring. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna connect this. I'm gonna disconnect by holding Alt and left clicking and then push this back in. Now it should look exactly the same. You'll see that there's like min and maxes for everything, min max so scale, min max rotation, offset. And so if I go to min max scale, if I change this to, let's say like 0.1, you'll notice you're ranging from 0.1 
to one in terms of its scale ratio over here. So it's obviously too much. So I'll just move this back to uh, one. Actually, I'll, I'll change it to 0.6, okay? And I'll move the, the max to, let's call it two. And uh, that's a bit much. Uh, let's go 1.2. Uh, that's good enough. And then the next thing I'll do is probably just add some rotation, uh, although it's probably not gonna look that insanely different. Maybe just change the rotation on the Y a little bit, let's say. Now, one thing I wanna notice is or I want to point out is these trees are growing kind of unrealistically on the hill the way they're growing maybe the grass is fine how you control that is this absolute rotation if you turn this on it'll just kind of turn things straight okay so from here that pretty much covers most of it i mean obviously i could do the same thing at a transform point to the grass then come in here and min max that's probably the most powerful thing you could do and just i'm gonna change this to 0 0.6 and so now you'll see there is actually a diversification of size and just like that we kind of get a lot going on in here you can also add rocks obviously you can add a i'll probably suggest just copying and pasting this and then controlling rocks separately as well that's at least the way i do it rather than just you know adding more types of meshes in a mesh spawner grass is, is not gonna be equally distributed with rocks nor is it gonna be equally distributed with the trees it's gonna have different density levels so for me i think it's better to just kind of split them off just like this so in here i'm just going to switch this over to let's just call it a rock descriptor and so i have something actually not rock but stone is what it's called so stone one i have stone just kind of spread across here and again i could just change this down from 0 0.8 0 0.9 for example i'm going to see less of those i can also just change the size of these things to get less of them so i, I believe if i go to like 200 200 200 i'll get even less of those why that's happening is because i'm creating a larger point so if i turn this on the difference is i have less points in my grid that's another way to control how much you have in your scene now the next video will cover how you can create a path in here to kind of split apart from the grass basically subtracting it through a difference and using splines to create a path and to difference it from the larger volume and then using a spline to then create a town and basically dynamically control that town and infill things into that spline zone to create a town or a forest, whatever you like to do. But that'll be in the next video. Hopefully this made some sense to you and uh, catch you in the next one.